Hello and a very warm welcome to the winner celebration of the Build Back Better Awards. Today we're looking at the outstanding projects and products in the autumn edition of the lighting category. My name is Ray Maloney. And my name is Dave Tilly. And we're going to be your host for the next half hour or so. We'll see all the winners and hear why they won and what makes them special from some of the expert judges. Now the Build Back Better Awards celebrates innovation, creativity, environmental leadership and social purpose in the built environment. We celebrate that innovation that will shape the post-Covid age. And we also recognise those projects that reflect our change priorities. Now, unlike a standard awards, the Build Back Better Awards can give ratings to all those entrants that meet the exacting criteria. The judges can award either gold for entrants which exhibit superlative innovation and unique points of difference or platinum for truly exceptional exemplars. Additionally, for entrants with outstanding commitments to the circular economy and sustainability principles, judges can, in certain circumstances, award the Build Back Better Green Rating. Making these sometimes fine judgments is no easy matter, which is why we've assembled a team of 25 of the industry's leading specifiers and clients. They've spent weeks assessing, scoring, and finally rating the entries. Let's take a look who they are, Dave. David Atkinson, principal of David Atkinson Lighting Design and a former Lighting Designer of the Year. Ruth Kelly Waskett, Senior Associate at Hoare Lee and President of the Society of Light and Lighting. Peter Fordham, Electrical Design Manager at Sainsbury's. Dean Skira, Architect, Product and Lighting Designer and Founder of the Skira Design Practice. Karam Ali Asfaroglu, Former Senior Lighting Designer at Spears Major and Principal of Dark Source. Guy Young, Head of Sales at One Space Interiors. Doris Bagahorn, Senior Lighting Designer at ACOM. Dan Lister, Associate Director of Lighting at Arrow. David Mooney, Head of the Architectural Lighting Group at Atkins. Chris Barnes, Energy Manager at London South Bank University. Susan Lake, Principal of Susan Lake Lighting Design. Gordon Routledge, Director of eFix. Andrew Bissell, Director of Lighting Design at Kundal. Vasiliki Malakasi, Director at Idea Design. Ian Douglas Smith, Development Consultant at Kelly Taylor and Associates. Nigel Harvey, CEO of Ricolite. Mike Collett, Managing Director of Exalta. David Tilly, Founder of Lightology. Alma Kardzik, Principal of Alma Kardzik Lighting Design. Alawain Manyonga, Developer of the Chigubu Lantern and Young Lighter of the Year for 2020. Mary Rushton Beals, founder of the Lighting Design House. Chris Wright, technical director of PowerCore. Geraldine O'Farrell, a leading chartered building services engineer specializing in the heritage sector. Marcus Steffen, founder of Marcus Steffen Lighting Design. Of course, today's all about these, isn't it, Dave? It is, Ray. So let's now turn to the winners. The first projects. And I'm delighted to announce that not one, but two projects have achieved the highest accolade, which is Platinum. And the first of these is... Olympic Way London by Spears Major. The nighttime journey between the iconic Wembley Stadium and the Underground Station has been transformed by holistically designed and beautifully integrated lighting. The approach recognises the need to adapt the ambience in response to the changing density of users. The underpass has been transformed into a medium for dynamic content with low resolution media screens added to the walls. An abstract version of the media content flows into the tunnel successfully incorporating the advertising into an immersive brand experience. At the stadium a terrace of steps has become a vertical plane of light. The steps and plaza are lit from rows of projectors mounted vertically on tall masts. This is supplemented by integrated handrail lighting, ensuring changing light levels and uniformity demands can be met even on crowded match days. The judges describe the light as having great visual impact and bringing safety, functionality and beauty. 
The Wembley scheme is really amazing. I think it's just a, a great example of high quality lighting in a space that the public can use on a day-to-day -day basis. They've integrated the digital, the ambient lights, the background lights, they've made it safe and yet it's all balanced. Some days you've got uh, yeah, tens of thousands of people there for uh, a football match or a concert but also blending the fact that people live and work in that area. I really like that. I think it's a great example of considered lighting in the public environment. It is, and I really like the underpass, a fantastic use of colour. Totally agree. So what's next, Dave? Who's the next winner in Platinum? So the next Platinum winner I'm delighted to announce is Bath Abbey by Michael Grubb Studio. The new lighting at Bath Abbey plays a major role in revealing and celebrating the building's unique architectural features while providing flexible scenes for various events. The choice of warm white light brings an intimate ambience that acknowledges the Abbey as a place of worship. But the lighting can also create impact with dramatically lit scenes for events. High level lighting picks out the delicate profiles of a famous fan vaulting. Mid-level lights reveal the bath stone of the Gothic windows and the vaults of the side aisles. The cast iron Victorian chandeliers have been adapted to incorporate new low energy LED sources. The entire lighting system has been upgraded and operates via a new DMX lighting control system which allows each LED lamp to be individually controlled. Judges describe the lighting as a subtle and beautiful integration worthy of this magnificent building. It's a very difficult thing to light a church like this because there are so many features that could be lit but they've just selected certain elements. They've actually showed restraint in choosing what to light. The already outstanding building has been transformed by Michael Grubb Studio into a, a, a perfect space for worship. Every lighting professional loves the church. I think that, you know, there's such a great canvas for showing the, uh, the skills of the designer. It was, and it was an exceptional lighting design, Ray, and congratulations must go to the Michael Grubb studio team. Our next project has done a unique double. It has won both a Build Back Better Gold and a Build Back Better Green rating for exceptional commitment to the environment. Tell us who it is, Dave. It's saint Quentinaire in Belgium by ACTLD. The iconic San Quentinaire is a historical monument built in 1880 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Belgian Revolution. The previous lights consumed between 500 watts and 1 kilowatt each. Not only did ACTLD dramatically cut energy consumption, but it used greater visual accuracy to emphasize the classic lines of the monument. The judges described it as a beautifully executed project by a practice who truly understands exterior lighting. A very interesting use of different colour temperatures to define the archway, the frieze at the top of the, the main arch, and then different colour temperatures around the site. It gives it depth and it's an interesting scheme. There were different settings which helped to save energy, so that it wasn't always all lights on and all guns blazing. Sometimes it was just a useful lighting scheme for people to find their way from one place to the other. Now let's take a look at the gold rated projects. Variegation Index is an interactive digital artwork created for British Lands Building in Triton Street in central London. The company wanted to revitalise the lobby and create a more inviting social environment that would encourage the general public to use the space. The resulting artwork attempts to disrupt the boundary between public and private space by using biomimicry to increase the permeability between the outside and inside. Variegation Index is designed to explore the link between nature and well-being. It softens the existing corporate interior with 293 digital plant cells that cascade across the wall and expand the idea of plants giving feedback to their environment through photosynthesis. The camera uses a combination of infrared and RGB light to measure chlorophyll levels within the leaves. This information is then translated into real-time data visualization, appearing as an oscillating language of light and numbers across the cellular canvas. The judges applauded what they termed a playful and imaginative concept. This is a clever scheme and it's an artwork. It interacts and monitors the atmospheric conditions and that gets transferred into the, the artwork. Clever, very
very clever piece. The Sharjah Mosque is the second largest in the UAE. The brief to light concept was to preserve and accentuate the building's architectural and religious values. The design helps create a divine and inviting atmosphere for visitors and forges a connection between the outdoors and the indoors. Lighting was concentrated on defining the most impressive architectural elements. Light and shadow with different color temperatures create a depth and definition in all areas, especially on the facades. An advanced lighting control system is used for indoor facade and landscape lighting. It saves power consumption and allows different lighting scenes to be created. With minimal light pollution and a power density of less than 0.1 watt per square meter, the installation is designed to be as sustainable as possible. I love the attention to detail with this scheme in the way that they've used in-ground strips to illuminate behind the balustrades, which can be viewed from both sides. The highlighting equally of the domes and then just picking out little bits of detail. For me, looking up through that chandelier, up into the beautiful ceiling, the chandelier is delicate and yet also strong enough to hold all those lights. Located on a wharf in the old harbour of Reykjavik, these six wooden houses are part of a planned transformation of the area. The Verkus lighting design team wanted to unify the visual effects provided by both the interior and the exterior lighting as the resulting nightscape will always be affected by the illumination coming from the shop houses. The lighting designers developed a general indoor lighting scheme that would provide an additional character to the exterior scene. The ceilings inside are illuminated to highlight the architecture while providing a welcoming glow for pedestrians outside. Street light poles were carefully located in coordination with the shop houses to create a coherent rhythm of elements. Poles and light sources were selected to be visually discreet, as the scene has already many vertical elements. The intensity and light distribution from all outdoor light sources were carefully studied and specified to minimise light pollution. The lighting designers explained that they had considered how the inside and the outside light was going to be balanced together. And now we turn to a very subtle exterior project that has won a rare Build Back Better Green Award. It's the Jørpalandsholmen Island in Norway by Light Bureau. Jørpalandsholmen Island in southern Norway has been turned into an eco-tourism destination by the local authority. A pedestrian bridge connecting the island to the mainland has been built and landscape architect Anita Elferson Huss has masterminded a new two kilometre nature walk around the island. Designing lighting for this previously unlit path was a rare opportunity to explore just how little light one needs to see in comfort. Light Bureau developed a design where the artificial light would be balanced visually against the night sky to eliminate glare and keep the light levels low. The practice developed a family of custom fixtures with reduced light output and heavily shielded light sources. Caught in steel was the material of choice due to the robust qualities and patina that would complement the natural environment. Spotlights mounted on the trees accent key parts of the landscape. Post-top luminaires illuminate areas of the path densely populated by trees. The restrained use of light has resulted in low power consumption. It is estimated that the lighting for the path uses less than 0.3 watt per meter. The result is a subtle light treatment which makes the island a truly magical experience after dark. I think it's very sensitive in its approach. The use of the Corton bollard fittings, the little highlights of the trees, I think it's, it's a very evocative, nice scheme. Some really nice projects there, Dave. Uh, I particularly like the Sharjah Mosque project. Uh, it was very well illuminated, great, great use of contrast, great use of shadow, um, subtle lighting of all the architectural features. Mm -hmm. And it was a great project, so well done to Light Concept and all the team. And now we turn to products, and specifically there is one product that has achieved a, a, a feat which is unique in this particular session. They have achieved both a Build Back Better green rating and a Build Back Better platinum. Tell us who it is, Dave. Source Forward LED Replacement by ETC. 
There are 4 million Source 4 tungsten luminaires in theatres, theme parks and other buildings around the world. Upgrading them from their 750 watt incandescent lamp could have been a major headache for their owners. But ETC has developed a solution. The Source Forward is a specially designed LED retrofit which allows users to make the switch without significant upgrade costs or having to dispose of their existing fixtures. Source Forward directly replaces the existing lamp burner assembly with an innovative LED array. This works with the fixture's original reflector and lens optics. As well as enabling the reuse of the existing fixture body and lens tubes, Source Forward reduces power consumption by up to 76%. It also dramatically cuts the amount of heat emitted. This in turn reduces the demand for air conditioning in performance spaces. Source Forward is as dimmable as the original tungsten predecessors and they can also be controlled with DMX for a more theatrical quality dimming curve. Existing Source Fours can be upcycled to LED in just a few minutes without any special tools. The white light version lasts for 45,000 hours and the colour version for 60,000 hours. The judges love the concept, calling it a major contribution to the circular economy. They've taken an industry uh, standard product and, and brought new life to it in the form of LED. Adding energy performance but also new features to a product, that, that's an impressive design. My origins obviously came out of theatre and there are thousands of theatres throughout the country who've got incandescent light sources right now. It's a really useful tool to have this retrofit back end. The judges really loved that retrofit, didn't they, Dave? They did. They've done a real service for all those Source 4 owners out there, and there are a lot of them. There are indeed. So well done to ETC. So tell us, who's the next winner in products, Dave? There are two winners of the Gold and Green Awards. Let's take a look at both of them and see what makes them special. The Tube LED Mini HE represents a major change in Lucent's design thinking and moves the company towards a modular approach. This enables the company to reuse, recycle and mostly upgrade the technology within the body of the original lighting fixtures. Lucent sees this as part of a move away from the throwaway mentality towards a circular economy in the lighting industry. The HE is based on the existing tube LED series. It's a 60mm diameter LED spotlight with an integrated 250 milliamp driver delivering 900 lumens at a CRI of 90. For the integral LED, Lucent developed an easy to install plug and play LED module for the spotlight. Alongside the modularity of this fixture, it also provides an efficacy of 117 lumens per watt using only 5.6 watts of power. What's impressed me through these awards is how we're starting to see a lot of companies think about modular designs, being able to upgrade their products, and that's really impressed the judges. The body of the average luminaire is usually made from plastic or precious raw materials. When Trilux wanted a more sustainable, biodegradable material, it looked to other industries for inspiration. The surprising answer came from corn. That's because cornstarch can be turned into a synthetic polymer called polylactic acid, or PLA. This biocompatible thermoplastic is environmentally friendly and suitable for producing the luminaire body using a 3D printer. PLA features low moisture absorption, low flammability, high UV resistance, colour fastness and good bending strength. But its real advantage is its biodegradability. Under industrial composting conditions, the material decomposes entirely in just a few months. With Graft Architects, Trilux created a version of its Pirelia LED office light with the body made from PLA. Judges described the new version of the Pirelia as a major step forward in materials and manufacturing process. So Trilux have stepped up in two ways really. The first is 3D printing but also new materials, so cornstarch in light fittings, <laughs> you know, thinking about, uh, yeah, not recyclability, but even to be able to compost the product in the future and think of how we actually end of life disposal. It's nice to see lighting companies going outside the industry for great ideas, so I think that was brilliant. Yeah, I agree, right. Right, let's look at the last two gold winners in the product section. The signature exterior light from Holofane features a patented innovation called Transition Zone Technology. 
an optical system which creates a luminous area between the brighter waveguide and the night sky. This cascade of contrast ratios reduces the perception of glare and makes the luminaire highly visually comfortable. The light source is tucked neatly up into the luminaire. This makes the nightscape visually quiet. The signature light engine is completely uniform without the pixelation found in backlit diffusers. New ink technology provides wide distributions while remaining uniformly luminous in appearance. The judges cited its fantastic optical performance and its elimination of glare. It's great to see manufacturers innovating when it comes to street lighting, particularly when it comes to optics. When bacteria, viruses and other pathogens come into contact with UVC, the light breaks down their DNA, deactivating them. This principle has been used by Lumini to build the Purify Air W, which tackles the airborne transmission of viruses. By mounting this luminaire high on a wall, day-to-day -day tasks can continue safely below, while the UVC air disinfection works continuously in the background. The units use special high-powered LEDs to safely kill 99.98% of airborne pathogens, bacteria and viruses such as COVID-19. In an independent lab test, it did this within 10 minutes. Purify Air W is available in wall-mounted and ceiling-mounted versions for taller ceilings, with louvered baffles in place to prevent light leakage below the recommended installation height. The judges described it as a big contribution to improving air quality, health and well-being in the workplace. This is the first time we've seen LEDs actually used for that application. That has a lot of advantages over previous fluorescent technology that relied upon, obviously, lamps with mercury in there. What's been striking through this Build Back Better Awards judging process is how it's not just about being low energy anymore, it is about that circular economy, it's about reusing products, it's about what's gone into the product in the first place, where it's built, how it'll be used in the future, how it'll be recycled, and, and manufacturers are going to need to start thinking about that more and more because we're getting the sense from the designers, from the judges on the panel that their clients are starting to ask about this stuff. Huge congratulations to all of our superb winners. And I'd like to echo that. And I'd also like to thank all the entrants to the Build Back Better Awards. Thank you for supporting the aims and values of the programme. And uh, we'll see you all again in 2022. Huge goodbye from me. Big goodbye from me.